Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome SMU's newest students, the entering class of 2023.
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and welcome the alumni marshals of the Rotunda Passage. They have returned to SMU, their alma mater, to welcome you, the 2023 entering class. They guided you through Dallas Hall, past the flag of the United States, the flags of the states of this union, and the flags of the homelands of many of our international students. These flags acknowledge the fact that even though you have come from dis different places, now you are here, and now you are all Mustang. and greet representatives of your faculty, the faculty of Southern Methodist University.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and welcome the Platform Party and R. Gerald Turner, President of Southern Methodist University. Leading the Platform Party. <laughs> leading the Platform Party is Chief Marshal Thomas Osang. Chief Marshal Osang is carrying the Bradley Kent Carter baton which signals the start of all SMU academic ceremonies. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. I'm Elizabeth Laboa, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. We gather here today for the 109th opening convocation of Southern Methodist University. Reverend Lisa Garvin, chaplain and minister to the university, will give the invocation. Please remain standing. Good afternoon. You all have had a busy weekend. You've met lots of new friends. And over the last few days, you've explored this amazing city and begun friendships that I promise you will sustain you for a lifetime. Tomorrow is when the work begins, your first official day of class at SMU. So in this time together, we center ourselves for the intellectual formational experience that will unfold in your time here on the hilltop. I invite you to take a deep breath, close your eyes, breathe out, and imagine who it is that you want to become. The Lord be with you. Let us join our hearts and minds as we pray. Creator and source of life, we are filled with anticipation, seeking knowledge, longing for community, hoping for peace and justice. Guide our minds, inspiring teacher, that we might be innovative leaders who stretch into the unknown to explore and discover what is currently beyond our greatest imagination. Strengthen our spirit's sustaining companion to persevere in the face of challenges and to offer compassion to our neighbors here on the hilltop and around the world. Nourish our heart's mothering spirit for lives of purpose that cultivate ethical leadership, just community, and courageous change that we may see, sow seeds of justice and harvest the fruits of peace. This we pray with courage, curiosity, and with hope. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> that was a big sigh of relief. <laughs> I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you, to our new first-year students and our new transfer students, to the parents, partners, family, and friends of our students, to our faculty and retired faculty, to our administrators, staff, and special guests, and to our alumni. I also welcome those who are watching this special event online from around the world. Students, you just completed your processional, which is one half of one of our university's most symbolic traditions, Rotunda Passage. The Rotunda Passage is comprised of two parts, a processional and a recessional. You will complete your recessional, the second half of this tradition, at the end of your undergraduate career at the baccalaureate service during commencement weekend. You were guided through Dallas Hall's Rotunda today by alumni marshals. These alumni are parents of entering students who, like you did today, have participated in Rotunda Passage and serve as custodians to this rich and meaningful tradition. We are always delighted to have them back on campus and are especially pleased that they are here today to guide the newest members of the community. These alumni symbolize the continuity of our community, a community with a rich heritage, an exciting present, and an ambitious future. Will the alumni marshals please stand? Please thank me in joining these alumni marshals. Thank you for your contributions today. 
To our new students, we are honored to formally welcome you into the SMU family. It's appropriate that we gather in McFarland Auditorium, a beautiful and historic place on occasions such as this convocation. Today, we join those who have preceded us and in so doing, make our own distinct contribution to this great university. At this time, I want to recognize certain other members of today's platform party and audience. I will ask these individuals to stand when introduced and remain standing, and I ask that you please hold your applause until all introductions are made. R. Gerald Turner, President of SMU. David Miller, Chair of the SMU Board of Trustees. Michael Harris, Professor and Chair of the Department of Education Policy and Leadership, President of the SMU Faculty Senate, and SMU trustee. Joining us in the audience is SMU trustee and chair of the alumni board, Philip Wise. Vice presidents of the university in attendance are Brad Cheeves, vice president for development and external affairs. Casey Meje, vice president for student affairs. Harold Stanley, vice president for executive affairs. And Paul Ward, Vice President for Legal Affairs, General Counsel, and Secretary to the Board of Trustees. Deans and directors representing their schools and areas include Thomas DiPiero, Elizabeth Martin Armstrong Dean of Dedman College of Humanities and Sciences. Samuel Holland, Auger H. Meadows Dean of Meadows School of the Arts. Nader Jalili, Mary and Richard Templeton Dean of the Bobby B. Lyle School of Engineering. Holly Jeffcoat, Dean of SMU Libraries. Stephanie Knight, Leon Simmons Dean of Annette Caldwell Simmons School of Education and Human Development. Michael McKee, Dean Ad Interim of Perkins School of Theology. Matthew Myers, Dean and Tullison Chair in Business Leadership of Edwin L. Cox School of Business. Jason Nance, Judge James Noel Dean of Dedman School of Law. Robin Poston, Dean of the Moody School of Graduate and Advanced Studies. Melinda Sutton, Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. Alina Hicks, Assistant Vice Provost and Dean of Admission. Heather Deshawn, Professor and Chair of the Roy M. Huffington Department of Earth Sciences and our Platform Party Marshal. And lastly, Alex Alarcon, president of the student body. Please welcome these individuals. I also wish to recognize my colleagues from the presidents and provost offices, plus other individuals who make important contributions to the institution. Again, I will ask each person to stand when introduced and remain standing. And I ask that you hold your applause until all are introduced. Sherry Kunovich, Associate Provost for Student Academic Engagement and Success. Dana Osherwitz, Associate Provost for Institutional Planning and Effectiveness. Wes Wagner, Vice Provost for Enrollment Management and Chief Enrollment Officer. And Aramis Watson, Dean of Residence Life and Student Housing. Lastly, I also wish to recognize a few other important members of our SMU community, President Turner's wife, Gail Turner, and my husband, Todd Ridgway. Please join me in welcoming these individuals. Throughout its history, SMU has been served by distinguished faculty who are deeply devoted to our students. Our faculty are the intellectual lifeblood of our university. It is with great pride and pleasure that I ask the faculty emeriti and our faculty in service to please stand. Please join me in recognizing our colleagues. In our faculty delegation this afternoon, I'm happy to acknowledge the newest members of our faculty who have been educated at many of the world's greatest institutions of higher education. I would ask that our new faculty members please stand for a special welcome as well. S 
Students, as you entered the auditorium, you were led by the faculty and residents for your residential commons, who signed the opening convocation registry to record your participation in this ceremony and to affirm your membership in one of SMU's 11 residential commons. This registry is part of the university archives and begins the record of your membership in the SMU community. Will the faculty and residents please stand and be acknowledged? At this time, I'm pleased to welcome members of the platform party who are here to greet you. First, I call forward David Miller, member of the SMU Board of Trustees and Chair. Following Mr. Miller, we will hear from Professor Michael Harris, President of the SMU Faculty Senate, and Mr. Alex Alarcone, President of the SMU Student Body. Mr. Miller? Thank you, Provost Laboa. Distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and most importantly, you, the remarkable new students of SMU. Tomorrow marks the beginning of your academic journey as a Mustang. It is with immense pride and honor that on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I welcome you to this extraordinary community of world changers and want to congratulate you on the great choice you made in selecting SMU. This university is emerging very rapidly as one of the finest in the country. The Board of Trustees is wholeheartedly invested in your success and assure you you are going to receive an extraordinary education. We believe very strongly in your potential, your capabilities, and your ability to make a lasting impact on the world. I say this both as chairman of the board and also a proud alumnus. Years ago, I entered this university on a basketball scholarship pursuing my undergraduate degree in business. Later, I had the privilege of returning as a graduate student, this time on a fellowship for my MBA. My experiences, both academically and athletically, during those formative years have shaped me in a profound way, and will for, I will forever be grateful for the opportunities SMU prov provided me. But let me share this plot twist with you. My journey to SMU almost never came to be. Back in my day, I think there are probably some athletes in the room that perhaps can relate to this, uh, the recruiting process didn't begin until your junior year. While I'd been offered several handfuls of scholarships by other schools, as national signing date approached, I hadn't been contacted my, by my dream school, SMU. As the pressure mounted, somewhat disheartened, I started preparing myself to commit to another university, which by the way was one of SMU's foremost competitors. My mother, who attended SMU in the 1940s and was a very proud Mustang, encouraged me to be patient. She said, wait a couple of days. And literally 48 hours later, the SMU basketball coaches showed up in my high school gym and offered me a scholarship. It was a magical moment that has profoundly shaped the trajectory of my life. In the spirit of today's festivities, I'm reminded of a quote from legendary basketball coach John Wooden who said, Success comes knowing that you did your best to become the best that you are capable of becoming. I hope these words resonate with you as you embark on your own transformative journey of learning and growth. Embrace setbacks and challenges. They are merely opportunities in disguise that can propel you closer to realizing your fullest potential. Thank you, and may this academic year be filled with endless possibilities, remarkable achievements, and many, many new friendships. Pony up. On behalf of the almost 800 full-time faculty on campus, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Now, I know that no one wants a homework assignment from a professor the night before classes start. So let's just say this is an extra credit assignment. Everybody loves extra credit, right? So here's your three-part extra credit assignment. First, Take advantage of different classes. Now, I have two high school age kids, and so I'm sure your parents are reminding you that you will need to find a job, and they're not wrong. But here's the reality. You never know what classes you will take over the next four years that will spark an interest or develop skills that will serve you for the rest of your life. That's the value of the liberal arts. For me, it was an introductory acting class. I thought it was just one of those required classes you have to take, 
But the skills I learned in that class have helped me as a teacher as much as any I took in graduate school. Second, find a place where you belong on campus. Now, I'm particularly talking to my fellow introverts out there who may hate the idea of going and meeting a bunch of people you don't know. For me, I was a band nerd. That was really, I didn't care about the music. I just wanted to go to basketball games and have some friends. I think the music didn't matter, but it was a way for me to get involved. Whatever your thing is, get out, join a club, join an organization. In four years, some of what you will remember most fondly will be the groups and clubs that you join. The third part of your extra credit assignment is to know what resources are available to you here on campus, starting with your faculty. Your faculty are gonna give you a syllabus on the first day of class, and it will have all the readings, the requirements, the deadlines, the policies, everything you will need for that class. Read it and check it throughout the semester. Every professor has something called office hours. That is a time set aside for us to meet with students, answer questions, and help you with any part of class where you might be struggling. But here's the secret. Most students don't go to office hours. Be the exception. Go to the library and meet the librarians. They can help you write your papers. Go to the help desk when that paper you're writing just disappears in the middle of writing it. There are tutoring services, counseling and mental health resources, anything you might need. This university provides so much to students and you're already paying for it, so get your money's worth. If you do this extra credit assignment, I will guarantee you, guarantee you, that you will get better grades and maybe you'll learn something along the way. I know I speak for all of my colleagues on campus that we're so glad you're here. We look forward to working and learning with you over these next four years. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alex Alarcón, and I'm honored to be your student body president this year. Now, I'm sure you've heard these kinds of speeches before. They usually begin with an empathizing statement. When I was in your seat four years ago, however, I was not in your seat. Due to COVID, I was on my computer in Bose Hall 201 with my randomly assigned roommate. Now, that may sound a little bit sad, and it kind of was, but it's also one of my fondest memories today because it was the start of a great friendship. During those gloomy days, my roommate and I would just strike up conversations with random people at UMF to feel more of a sense of community. Some of you would hate to talk to random people. Others would hate to be the ones interrupted. But that was my path, and yours might be completely different. No matter what your path is, I recommend that you build things that will last. The friendship that I have with my ex-roommate will last. The faith that I have found purpose in will last. The memories that I've made with my fraternity brothers will last. And the service events I've been a part of will also last. Sure tomorrow, you have the opportunities, academically, socially, leisurely, to do whatever you want in college. So take risks, go out on the whim, but don't forget to make decisions that you'll be proud of when you look at yourself in the mirror four years from now. The grades and studies are the top priority. Don't forget that, work hard. But if you take anything away from my quick two-minute spiel, is that the friends who become like family, the memories that'll make you nostalgic, and the lessons that truly stick with you are what add on to you as a person, made this experience worth it. So go out there and build things that will last. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller, Professor Harris, and Mr. Alarcon. We have welcomed you with spoken words. We now welcome you with music. We at SMU are very proud of our musical excellence. We are pleased to share with you the talents of the Meadows Convocation Chorus, who will sing SMU forever. This special piece is also performed at commencement. The song was written by Jimmy Dunn, SMU parent and songwriter, who wanted to capture in words how fast the university experience would be for his daughter and the memory she would have after graduation. The chorus is directed by Dr. Christopher Mason, Interim Director of Choral Activities in the Meadows School of the Arts.
Thank you. SMU's distinctiveness lies in its exceptional community. Mustangs who are dedicated to igniting your curiosity and shaping you into future world changers. In recent years, no individual has had a greater hand than shaping that future than today's speaker, SMU President R. Gerald Turner. Under his nearly three decades of leadership, a rarity for higher education, SMU has seen remarkable progress in educational quality and community impact. In fact, your class is one of the most academically qualified and diverse incoming classes in our history, with 35% of you from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. SMU's impressive trajectory under President Turner was a major factor in my decision to come here as provost three years ago. Working toward achieving our goals together continues to be a pleasure and an honor. Please join me in welcoming President R. Gerald Turner. Thank you, Provost. And for those of you that were at the baseball game yesterday, I know my outfit is a little bit different. Uh, that one was cooler, to say the least. But uh, I was glad, glad to see so many of you there being a part of that. It's all, it was just a part of our opening days. We've got a lot of events that have gone on, and of course now convocation. But the last and most important event, of course, will be when you start class tomorrow. Finally start working toward that college degree. Our first year students, four years will go by extremely fast. It's hard to believe how quickly they can go. Many graduates have told me that those four fast years were the best years of their life. Whether it is for you or not, it'll go very quickly. Your transfer students, those transfer students that are coming in, many of you have two years left, some three, but that too will go quickly. And we want you to be a part of the university as thoroughly as you possibly can. So transfers, get involved with it quickly. Parents are expecting you to graduate on time, whether your first years or second years. If they haven't told you that yet, they will when you go in and try to say, I wanna stay one more year. Uh, and you may want to, but hopefully it'll be because you're working on a master's at that time. I look forward to greeting you, not only in situations like this, but also in the dining commons. Once a month, Dr. Meje and I go to one of the dining commons, get us a plate, and walk around and find a table to join. If we join your table, you will survive. One time I heard a student, just as I was coming forward, say, oh my God, I hope he doesn't stay here. So from a religious standpoint, it can bring about some strengthening of that, I guess. We didn't stop there just to kind of let them know that God may, in fact, answer prayer uh, because we went somewhere else. But nevertheless, we'll be there, and I think you'll thoroughly uh, enjoy each other over those meals, but hopefully enjoy Dr. Meje and I being with you. When SMU opened in 1915, there were 125,000 people in Dallas. Now the whole Metroplex is about 8 million. This university was founded by the mutual support of the United Methodist Church and the business and civic leaders in Dallas. Most of the students at that time were from Texas and mainly around this surrounding area of Dallas. The change shows that your class, 40% of you will be from Texas, 60% from out of state. So it's very much different than it was when it began. And those of you from out of state, I know had no idea it would be this hot when you got here. Neither did we. Uh, so we're all just gonna go through it together. But I should add that those of us who are native Texans are looking forward to the day that some of you from out of state lose your very distinctive accents and speak with the right Texas language. You'll have incredible learning opportunities on campus. Dallas is a positive, energetic, can-do city, and we try to absolutely emulate that. North Texas employers and those outside the Lone Star State appreciate SMU students based on your predecessors because they're well-educated, 
culturally intelligent, know how to interact with people, and had internships and other kinds of out of classroom learning opportunities that are unique to being in a dynamic, large city like Dallas. These expectations are consistent with our branding statement, World Changers Shaped Here, which I know you've seen on many things and you've heard several times today, but we believe it. Every theme and every work, word of that statement was carefully debated and chosen from a lot of alternatives. We had several lists. Ultimately, the most discussed component was the word shaped because we believe that's basically what goes on here. Although faculty overseeing the academic curriculum that you'll follow will provide a major part of that shaping, it also results from friends, those that you make here, so choose your friends carefully, your experiences residing in the commons, practical knowledge gained from your internships within the city of Dallas, and the intellectually stimulating impact of many of the renowned scholars and world leaders you will be able to hear and interact with on your time on campus. So much of the shaping is a byproduct of the living and learning environment that we create here together at SMU. And part of this shaping process during your time here are several fundamental skills that we hope you will augment and to hopefully not just develop, but increase what you already have because they're important beyond your academic major. Like most fundamental skills, they often go unappreciated and often stay under the radar, but will dramatically affect your success and your ability to be a world changer on either a small stage or a very large one. The first one is communication skills. A common compliment that all of us on the stage receive from employers about SMU graduates is the strength that they exhibit in their writing, public speaking, and other communication skills. If you can write, speak, and compute well and accurately, you have such an advantage in life. I can tell you that during my career, there have been individuals who are very qualified for a lot of reasons, but simply didn't get the job they were applying for because of their limited communication skills, particularly in writing. Communicating well enhances your personal and professional growth and also your self-confidence. This fact is even more true with the rise of large language artificial intelligence models like ChatGPT. Your professors will each outline in their syllabi for their classes what their rules are and expectations for how do you to use this tool. But regardless of how limited a particular class or strongly in a particular class it's enhanced, keep one thing in mind. You need to learn how to use it successfully and you don't need to let it dominate you. You are more than chat GPT. Your thought processes and the personality that comes through what you do is what is important for you to learn here as well as how to use it uh, correctly. Don't use it as a crutch. Use it as a tool. You are the one that needs to come out with the education. AI misses something important sometimes, and that's your voice. So be sure that you develop communication skills in all forms. If you need help, get it from the Alt Shooter Learning Enhancement Center. The Alt Shooter Learning Enhancement Center is a learning enhancement center for bright students. One time I had a student tell me, that they were not dumb. They didn't want to go to the Alt Shooter Learning Enhancement Center. And I said, I can't remember the last dumb student we admitted. It is a learning enhancement center for bright students and particularly for those who need some help in communication. So take your academic writing and critical reasoning courses seriously and take courses. You'll be wise if you do this, no matter what your major is. Take courses in history, philosophy, political science, English, religious studies, and other areas where you have to express well your ideas and you have to defend them. Second, skills in maintaining civility and freedom of speech. Not only is the ability to communicate essential, but the freedom to express your ideas is also foundational. Free speech has long been recognized as an absolute cornerstone of a thriving democratic society. Because of the fundamental role of expression has any restrictions or complications imposed on it, it is nearly always only followed by after intensive review by the Supreme Court in the U.S. or other uh, equivalent 
uh, judicial areas in other democracies. As you exercise this right, freedom of speech, it's important that you do it with humility and with civility because all Mustangs are valued. That is the student-generated motto that was developed here years ago. You should be able to discuss, debate, agree, and disagree with each other within the context of civil discourse. In a world where there are polar opposites on practically every economic and political issue, SMU has always been a site where differences of opinion could be respectively presented and debated. Not all opinions are equally valid, but after civil discourse and debate, the, the values of ideas usually rise or fall appropriate to their value over time. The ability to articulate and defend one's ideas while recognizing and respecting other points is an important component of shaping world leaders at SMU. In previous times of intense differences of opinion in our country, our university community has been able to discuss and debate those distinctions in the kind of unique environment with which a university is charged to provide. If not here, where? The answer is practically nowhere else, so protect it. I urge the class of 2027 to join your predecessors in, pre in preserving these opportunities for yourselves and for the classes that are going to follow you. Number three, cultural intelligence skills. The most effective long-term approach toward navigating complex human issues that might appear on our campus is to strengthen our sense of community. To do so, we must broaden our definition of who belongs here and know how more clearly those who make up our world on this campus. It's much easier to objectify and dehumanize those who are different from us if, they are to if we are totally unfamiliar with them as fellow human beings. As the provost said, there are 35% of you are from backgrounds that years and years ago and other times might not have had as full access to SMU and other schools that you might. You are a part of this. You're an absolute integral part of this. This whole state is practically majority minority. The world is moving in ways that if you can't operate with people of all backgrounds, eth uh, ethnical, uh, ethical backgrounds, as well as ethno, ethno uh, Dukes, come on, as <laughs> ethnical backgrounds. Every now and then, your, your mouth can outrun your brain. Therefore, the third skill that we hope you'll develop involves cultural intelligence. We have worked diligently over the years to ensure our campus is reflective of many do, uh, viewpoints, backgrounds, identities that make it up. And we hope that you will know and you'll contribute to the fact that cultural intelligence is a basic characteristic of SMU. We have a program here under Dr. Maria Dixon Hall called Cultural Intelligence that uh, will give you information and programmatic information that makes cultural intelligence a practical part of living. If you haven't already heard from her, you will in this orientation session. Fourth skill, ethical skills. The fourth fundamental area of knowledge that I'd urge you to enhance your ability to recognize are ethical conflicts and to discuss and act on the should, the ought, the right of life. That ability seems to have, been take, to have taken a beating lately in our society. The lack of moral compass undermines the quality of life for many people and certainly lowers the trust factor that people feel for these individuals. You want to be able to trust your friends and future spouse and employer. In turn, they, your family, your faculty, your future employer will want to be able to trust you and we intend for you to be leaders. And any person who eventually reports to you will want to trust you as a person of integrity. Part of the shaping anticipated in our world changer shaped here is that our students will be or will become compassionate, ethical leaders of integrity. The news is filled with successful people who have taken a great fall to their not recognizing simply or simply ignoring ethical issues. 
When students leave a college, particular college, due to suspension or dismissal for cheating on a test or plagiarizing a report, they operate under a cloud and find a much reduced list of options for their future. We have an ethical component in our university curriculum, and I urge you to delve deeply into the questions that are raised in your classes and within the various religious organizations on and around the campus. These are some of humanity's most interesting and challenging issues. Right now, ethical issues having to do with all the technology that we're developing is right on the forefront. You may want to take a class in technology and ethics. Questions about why and how things work are as interesting as they can be, but at the same time, the whys of life are sometimes a lot more important than the whats. Last one, relational skills. Ethical value should obviously extend to your personal life. During your time as a student, many of you will form relationships and friendships that will last a lifetime. This is another great value of your college experience. All of us up here, some of our best friends are people they, we knew as undergraduates. Some of those relationships will last for a season, while others will develop into romances and possibly even marriage or long-term commitments, but some may simply be just hookups. Regardless, it's important for you to understand, and I know what that means, Regardless, for you to understand that along with our university policies, there are state and federal laws that address campus sexual harassment and assault, which occur more often than gets recognized and certainly more often than we would hope. But the emotional and physical cost of these crimes, crimes are high. It's essential to recognize the accountability, regard, and concern for others that are inherent in intimate relationships. Consent is paramount, not only in Texas, but in, throughout the United States. And an intoxicated person, legally defined as 0.08 level or greater of alcohol, which is not much, is unable to give consent. A disregard for the rights and well-being of others can lead to a disastrous outcome that can follow you for many years to come. An intoxicated person cannot give consent. Some of you are from states where recreational marijuana is legal. It's not in Texas. So remember that if you're from one of those states. Take personal responsibility for your actions. Develop friends who will accept mutual accountability for themselves and you and the safety of others. And above all, be wise. Acknowledge that all Mustangs are valued and we, we want to treat each other with the respect that each of us is due. So in conclusion, as we approach the start of the term tomorrow, I'm confident that the world-class education will follow whatever major you decide to pursue. The faculty and administration are committed to it, and while you are doing well, and enjoying your time here, I urge you again to make sure that you also avail yourselves of the opportunities to strengthen any weakness you have in those five fundamental skills of communication, freedom of speech and maintenance of civility, cultural intelligence, ethical decision-making, and responsible relationships. When you leave SMU, you will depart as a stronger person if you intentionally work on these skills and keep them in mind. It's a great time to be at SMU, and it's a great time to be in Dallas, and many of you are here because of that combination. We look forward to officially beginning your quest with you tomorrow, so however you set your alarm clock, do it to ring loudly so that you will be up for the first day of class and get ready to pony up. Welcome to SMU. Thank you, President Turner. As the Provost and Chief Academic Officer of SMU, I'm convinced that one of the most important duties of this office, and indeed of all associated with the university, is that of supporting the full engagement of our students in the university community. 
Each student, faculty member, administrator, and staff member at SMU shares responsibility for building an academic community that creates, expands, and imparts knowledge through scholarship, creative activity, teaching, and service that shapes ethical leaders and world changers who contribute to their communities and excel in their professions in a global society. SMU is a community that cultivates principled thought, develops intellectual skills, and promotes an environment emphasizing individual dignity and worth, and a community that affirms its commitment to academic freedom and open inquiry, to moral and ethical values, and to matters of faith. And now, to present this entering class, I call upon Elena Hicks, Assistant Vice Provost and Dean of Admission. President Turner, Provost Leboa, Platform Party, and to the SMU community, I am thrilled to be with you today on behalf of the Office of Undergraduate Admission and the Division of Enrollment Services to introduce you to the entering fall class of 2023. For yet another year, this group of students is made up of the most academically talented and interesting first year and transfer class this university could imagine. Because of the unique qualities of every entering class, my team and I review their admission applications again in the summer to remember attributes and key drivers to ascertain the theme of my speech for today. This year, the choice of theme came quickly after our review. At SMU, we have a saying that means the world to us because we strive to live true to its motto each day. And you heard it earlier, all Mustangs are valued. All Mustangs are valued. Over the years, there have been important discussions and sometimes debates about inclusion and belonging, the value of what you bring to the table that is unique and just a little different than the next person. At SMU, we have long valued our students' uniqueness, diversity, excellence, creativity, intellectual ability, and integrity. There is no one thing a student is known for or admired for. It's the multitude of their merit, character. And at the end of the day, it's why we believe these students, you students, belong here. Here are some ways we look at the diverseness the variety, and what we value about this entering class. Their ages range from 16 to 45. They represent 893 high schools and 122 colleges worldwide. This group is comprised of 47 states and the District of Columbia, with the top states being Texas, California, Florida, New York, Connecticut, Illinois, New Jersey, and Georgia. And let's not forget the 43 countries, leading with Mexico, China, Canada, the United Kingdom, Nigeria, and Vietnam. One of you comes from Tokyo, Japan, whose population is 13.9 million. Another of you comes from Winthorst, Texas, whose population is 344. The class represents 246 counties, 681 cities and towns, and 976 zip codes. From the first year cohort, 35% are students of color, and for transfers, that percentage is 46%. For those submitting standardized test scores, the average ACT is a 32. 6,885 advanced placement and 927 international baccalaureate classes were taken, along with 13,051 credit hours of dual credit or transfer work. 
The class comes from homes speaking 14 primary languages, with the top few of them being English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Mandarin, Polish, Danish, and Italian. The class took just under 6,000 hours of language studies in school, encompassing 22 different languages. The interim class represents 82 academic majors and programs here at SMU. 215 students are the first in their family to go off to college. 41 have a parent or guardian who works at the university. And 34 have served our country in the armed forces. All Mustangs are valued. The examples I just mentioned are a fraction of how we describe the depth and the breadth of our entering students. What I want you to take away from these accomplishments and attributes is that we are a better university because of you students. We have chosen you to chart the course of your community, state, your nation. We believe the diversity and value you bring to our institution makes you richer in character and success and to be a nimble player on the global field of life and business. In the last few years, community and the ability to be together in the same space at the same time is a commodity and a blessing. We gladly share our space with you, my dear entering class. We look forward to being next to you as you forge ahead at SMU and make your dreams come true. Your values and worth are the fabric of who we are as Mustangs, as family. Be courageous, be brave, be a guiding light for others. We know what you are made of and we're incredibly proud. Now, it is my honor to present the entering class and the opening convocation registry to President Turner. I ask Chief Marshal Thomas Osang to join me on stage with the convocation registry that has been signed today by the faculty and residents representing each of the 11 residential commons. Will all new incoming students please rise and remain standing? President Turner, on behalf of the Office of Undergraduate Admission and with my deepest gratitude to the faculty, staff, alumni, and other members of the university community who have helped bring these students to the hilltop, I present the entering class of Southern Methodist University for fall of 2023. Their faculty and residents have noted their presence today in the Convocation Registry. Thank you, Dean Hicks. Uh, as president of SMU, I welcome you again to our community of learning, and I ask you to accept this four-part pledge. I'll ask you whether you accept it at the end of it, so please listen to all four parts. Be mindful of the privileges and responsibilities of citizenship at SMU. Be engaged in the community and be aware of the diverse backgrounds among you as one of the strengths of SMU. Third, be diligent in your pursuit of the academic goals that brought you here in the first place. Four, be committed to avail yourselves of the incredible resources that are now before you. If you're willing to accept these responsibilities of our community, please note by saying, I will. Thank you. I'm pleased to accept the entering class of 2023. I'll now sign the opening convocation registry. And it will go back to the archives of the university. Thank you. Terrific. Please be seated. The building we are sitting in today, McFarland Auditorium, was a gift to SMU by Robert McFarland. 
so that we might have a center for our collective life and so that we could also serve the cultural needs of North Texas. One of the traditions surrounding opening convocation has always been the lowering of the original fire curtain of McFarland Auditorium from 1926. While that curtain has been removed due to aging, you will see on the screen that is lowered at the end of today's ceremony an image of the historic mural, a painting of the Ovilla Methodist Church, a church attended by Mr. McFarland. The curtain was first lowered at the auditorium dedication, and today we honor the tradition. As of today, you, the entering students, join with SMU's past as you prepare to be part of our present and of our future. And now, will the entire audience please stand for the singing of the university's hymn, Varsity, and for the benediction, which will be delivered by Dean McKee. The words of Varsity are found inside your program. We will be led by the SMU Choir and the Imperial Brass. Following the benediction, we ask our entering students and guests to remain standing for the recessional. After the recessional, the Chief Marshal will dismiss you. Upon exiting the auditorium, you will be greeted on the historic main quadrangle by the sounds of the Mustang Band, led by Director Charles Aguilon and Peruna, our university mascot. If you are a member of the Mustang Band, you of course may leave to take your place with the band after the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal God, today we have gathered to begin anew. For these new students, today marks a new place and time to learn, to make new friends and develop relationships, and to face new challenges. As faculty, administrators, and staff, we have met these new students and will continue to do so at the beginning of a new academic year for all of us. We ask them. May this celebration convey our commitment to Southern Methodist University and to the academic success of these students. Today, our new students have also learned that, about SMU's traditions and that world changers are indeed shaped here. And so, as we leave, let us remember these words. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, at all the times you can. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.